Commander's a format all about having fun, and today we're talking about 10 of the most fun commanders in Magic the Gathering. I'm going to start it off with Captain Engrathod, Davy Jones himself. This is an amazing commander. He likes to steal your opponent's things, he gets to steal artifacts and creature cards, and you know everybody's running awesome ones of those. He gives all of your horrors menace. He's a 3-6 for 5 mana, so nobody's killing him with a lightning bolt. He's a fun build for new players and veterans alike. Awesome card, one of my favorite commanders to build of all time. Next up, I've got Orvar the Allform. He's a lot of fun. He's a changeling, so he's every single creature type. And whenever you cast an instant or sorcery spell that targets one or more of the things you control, you get to make a copy of that thing. So it's so much fun, you get to curse so much value, and then you're ready to get hated off the table or try to fight back. Because you will get hated off the table. This card is so strong. It is one of the strongest blue commanders in the game. If you look at any of the lists, besides probably mine, it is on the top of the list. Next on the list, we got Prismatic Bridge. This is one of my favorite commanders. It's got all five colors. You can use any card in the game in this deck. I usually run it in a dragon deck. I got the dragon deck built right here. Nobody lets me use it because it's built so decent. A lot of people usually underestimate this commander because it's got five colors and it has to do with the upkeep. It's kind of awkward. You get to put creatures from your library onto the battlefield. You're not casting them so nobody can counter them. They just come out onto the battlefield. It is such a powerful thing. There's all kinds of ways you can build the deck. Double your upkeeps, great card, one of my favorites. Next up we got Tesher, Ancestor's Apostle. He's so much fun for your bird tribal deck. Just kidding, we're not playing bird tribal. He has an ability that says whenever you cast a historic spell, you can return a permanent with mana value, a creature with mana value three or less from the battlefield to play. So. For the Tesher build I have, it's like putting together a puzzle with a million moving pieces that nobody else really understands until it works, and then you win. Next up, we got some honorable mentions. My honorable mention is going to be Marwyn, the Nurturer. This commander is so strong. <clears throat> Elves were my first commander deck I ever built. It was the 2014 commander deck. They were all monocolor precons. This is one of my favorite decks of all time. I just didn't put it on here because other people don't have that much fun when I play this deck because it is a very powerful deck. They call it the Elf Ball, but I'm more of a combo Elf deck that is super strong. It comes in for the win, and it's coming fast. It is really fun when you're on that side of the table. Next up, we got Adrix and Niv Twin Casters. This is one of my favorite commanders of all time and one of my favorite color combinations of all time. We got Simic, green, blue. It's a great card. It's got two simple lines of text. We got Ward 2. So people, you have to pay two to target this bad boy. Then, if we're creating a token, we create twice that many tokens instead. It's a simple line of text that is so powerful in the command zone. My personal Adrix and Niv deck, we are copying all kinds of stuff. We are trying to create 1 billion tokens in one turn, all in an explosive way, and it is so fun to use. We're running counter magic, just in case anybody's trying to mess with our stuff, and green so we can go big or go the fuck home. We're coming in for the kill, and we're coming in in one turn. It's an awesome deck. I fucking love it. Next up, we got Emoti, Celebrant of Bounty. She's honestly one of my favorite commanders of all time, and I really wish I could have put her even higher on this list, but... That's okay. She gives spells that cost six or more mana Cascade, and then she herself has Cascade. So with Simic, you're allowed to ramp and ramp and ramp, and then you cast multiple spells that all cost six or more, so you can Cascade into spells that Cascade, top decking with all kinds of manipulation. So I fucking hate this commander. This commander, if this sits down at my table, it is not going to live through the round. I am going to use all of my target removal to kill this fucker. I do not want him... It's not fun. Not fun. I'm gonna kill him. If he don't pull him down, he's gonna die. I'm pulling out Adrix and Niv. He's coming out and he's gonna kill Emoti. We're we're battling. Hate this fucker. And you know it's so much fun because if you are able to kill Emoti the first time, I'm like that's okay. I cascade. I'll play him again. And then you yeah, cascade off it again. You kill it one more time and I go that's not fun anymore. I'll play Eldrazi Titan. I uh, hate this deck so much. Like. God, it comes with so much good stuff. It is a good deck. I'm not going to hate on it that much. It is an awesome deck. So fun to play, especially for new players. Veterans get so much fun out of this because it's such a powerful card. Top tier. It's got to hit the top 10. It's a great card to play. It's so much fun. Next up, we got Magda, Brazen Outlaw. She's short, but she could get it. You know, he'll try to riz her up, but she's so cool. She's got a pile of treasure from all the dwarves she's been tapping. She's searching for stuff for the command zone. And as we've learned... Command zone tutors are kind of powerful. The best dragons in your deck are going to be super fun things like Ancient Copper Dragon, Tear of the Peaks. This commander is super solid. It's super easy to get five treasures out. Treasures are running rampant in Commander. 
I hate it so much, but it is so solid. I run them in every single deck because they are so strong. And with Magda, it's so easy to get it. Five of them, 10 of them, 15, 20. And we're pulling out the biggest, baddest dragons constantly. And if we want to play a combo deck, we got the artifacts there. She's easy to combo because we're tutoring anything in our deck. A solid commander. At two mana, she's really easy to get into play. The one downside is she does only have one toughness. So you really need to be ready with that swift foot boots or those lightning greaves or she's getting removed. And people will target her because they know the danger of Magda. People have played her online in plenty of places. I think the Game Knights played her. I think on the Professor's channel they played her. The danger of this card is real, and a target is on your face. Yeah, you can't have that much Riz without a target. So we just talked about Mono Red, now we're talking about Mono Blue. My favorite, Arkham Dagson. He is my favorite Mono Blue commander in the game, and people do not put enough respect on this man's name. My deck is so powerful. It is my most powerful deck in the game, and I feel like he should be on the CDH list. He is b plus tier at best, and my goal is to put some respect on this man's name. I'm searching my library. Early, early game, putting all the cheap mana rocks in there, and we're coming in, we're shutting down everybody, nobody can win except me, and I'm playing on everybody's turn. Everybody's turn, I get an untapped step. I'm doing my abilities three, four times every single turn, and not just every my turn, every your turn, every his turn, every motherfucking his turn. If it weren't for the fact that Urza Highlord Artificer exists, this would be a household name when it comes to mono blue commanders. I love this commander so much. He, it, I, I'm not going to take him apart ever, but he is going to sit on that shelf until somebody thinks they bad enough to try me. I hate how much he loves this deck. Next up, we got the very pinnacle, the top of the mountain, our number one choice for both of us, Cranko Mob Boss. No, it's number one. It's number, number two. Don't let him lie to you, it's number one. So Cranko Mob Boss for me goes beyond just the commander itself. The very first deck I ever learned to play on was a late 90s Goblins deck. The very first deck that I ever played with in Commander was a Cranko deck. The very first deck I ever built was a Cranko deck. The deck I've played the most and probably is the best deck I've ever built is an extremely tuned Cranko deck. And there's just nothing that brings me more joy than coming back to where I started and playing good, wholesome goblins. And then Cranko is a super solid number two commander on the list. So next up, we got the most fun commander in the game. And I might be a little biased, but I don't care. This is Sauron. The Lord of the Rings. This commander is so fun. He's eight mana, which makes people underestimate this man. All we're going to play is mana ramp, and we're going to control the board until we cast our giant commander. We're, we're going to reanimate some of the most strong creatures in Magic the Gathering. We're going to pull them out. People can't even counter our commander because we still get the cast trigger. They're going to need to counter it plus the stifle. We get 20, 25 power on the board every time we cast it. It's an amazing card. has so much power. It comes in. It's devastating. I knew it would be mean as soon as I read the card. I would even built it not that strong, and it is so mean to everybody. People hate playing it, but it, I do a lot. I like recur from the graveyard, pulling stuff, drawing hundreds of cards. It's awesome. Great, great, great commander. Love it. At eight mana, it was the perfect choice for number two. My name is King Luke. I'm Squire Nate. Thanks for joining us. Remember to subscribe if you want to see more of these videos. See you next time. Peace.